Mm, yeah. We call him Fissetti. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, yeah, Fissetti's really nice. He, he seems very, like... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to really describe it, but I respect all the things that he says. Um, and I know that he's worked with a lot of top players, and I feel like I'm learning from everything that he says, and I don't know, I try to apply it. So it's kind of tough, because this is the first tournament, and in a way, I expect a lot, because I want to pick up from where I left off, minus the injury part. Um, and I know that he wants to do really well, too, so there's that factor, but also at the same time, mm, I don't know. I don't want to like put coach pressure on him. Mm, so yeah. Mm, what was I looking for? Someone that's like calm and knowledgeable and can kind of work with the team dynamic because my trainer and my physio, I've had them for like more than two years and they're more, they're like my family at this point. So just, I felt like anyone that I brought in now should be able to work well with them. Yeah, uh, so far it's been very good. I'm very uh, excited to be part of the team. And um, um, as you all know, uh, she's, an, she's an amazing player with a lot of potential. And um, the more I get to know her, like the more I believe in her even. So it's been, it's been a very good month. I think I coached against her the last three, four years, also with Angie in, um, in Wimbledon, um, with Vika in 2016 in, um, in Melbourne, also with Johanna Conta in 17. So um, I saw her development. Um, I saw a very good development the past years. Um, yeah, her movement got a lot better the past years. And I don't think, I mean, let's say I, we, my plan was to work on a few things. I prefer to keep it for me, for us. But um, it's more about the continuous um, improvement and, and trying to get better on, on every part of her game and her body too. So try to get physically stronger. But again, like tr keep developing the game like she has been developing the last years. And I think, um, <clears throat> well, especially bring me and the team also the, the tactical plan as, as I'm maybe known as an analytical coach. I love to use data and that's what I did. I, I brought in data um, to analyze her and to see which were the keys also to, to go to the next step. And I hopefully will see the next weeks that we got that extra step. Okay. And when I started with her, I didn't know how she was thinking in a match. Was she just playing on intuition or was she really thinking, calculating? Um, and, and she's different than I thought. Like she is, to me, a very intellectual player, person. Um, she knows exactly what she's doing. And I think that helps her to be, to be very cool at the most important moments because it's, it's more like she calculated exactly what she needed to do to win matches. And, and I believe that helps her. So far, that's my an analysis after one month, right? So, so, but I really believe that that was a big surprise for me, the way she was calculating stuff like that. And on the other hand, yeah, I mean, it's very clear that, that she loves the big stages, the big moments. Um, even at, at 22, she, she puts her, her goals very high. Um, that's also interesting. I worked with lots of top 10 players, but there's a big difference in ambition there too. You would, you would expect it all to be the same, but it's not. And I, I believe Naomi is, is by far the, not by far, Vika was very, very ambitious too, but uh, Naomi at her age especially is uh, super ambitious and um, yeah, she, she has a lot of goals for her career. Well, uh, there's, no, there's no different pressure um, for myself also. Like I, I want to coach players to win Grand Slams and that's, that always has been the, the ambition and it's, it's still like that. Um, 
with with a player like Naomi, you go to tournaments to win them, not to play finals or semifinals. That is that is the ambition, and I, I love that ambition. I love working under pressure, and in general, I always feel like I worked better also under pressure. <laughs> and um, but yeah, like you said, it's not that we we had to change a lot. It's not there that there. I would have changed a lot if I would have started after the U.S. Open, but she made. She made a good change there. She went back to, to she was using her strengths better, I think, uh, on the Asian swing, and, and she, got, she got her game plan, her winning game plan back. So um, also there, I th speaking to the father, which he told me a lot of things about her, and, and, and uh, th that's very useful. And, uh, and we have to keep going, I think, the same direction, like she was doing in the Asian swing uh, last year. And of course, keep making improvements there. So, yeah, keep developing the game. Well, working with Naomi Osaka, I think the goal must be to become number one in the world again, and um, yeah, to win slam, a grand slam, more slams. <laughs> like we will try to win every tournament we we play, and uh, that should be the goal with a player of her level. I think. Um, I think first of all, she needs to look at herself. Um, keep developing and make sure she starts every every match with the right, right um, motivation and uh, also preparation. Uh, and then, um, of course, Ashley. Um, after a great great year, and I think there's still also room for improvement. So let's see how she will show up this year. Uh, Andreescu, of course, if she can stay healthy. And um, well, the greatest player of all time, Serena. Like. She's still gonna be <laughs> dangerous as always. So I don't know how how many years more, but but for sure we have to uh, we have to be careful with her.